All right, I'm Mark Hafner. I live in South County, St. Louis. I'm the other senator. Um, uh, I have nine children, uh, six sons and three daughters. I have seven grandchildren. And when I found out that through birth certificates and social security cards that I had unknowingly made corporate slaves out of my children, I was a really unhappy person, okay? Uh, we showed the signature line on the checks and um, that is called microprinting. And now if I started a corporation and I knew that I had started a corporation, uh, I would open a corporate checking account for that corporation where I would be the president of, and it would make some sense for the signature line to say authorized signature because the corporation I would start wouldn't have a hand and couldn't sign anything. It would take a flesh and blood human being, the person who had started the corporation. But on a personal check, it doesn't make any sense because on a personal check, it's a personal check. But the truth is, is it's an all caps name. The checking account that you have is an all caps name. Look at your driver's license, it's an all caps name. Voter registration, credit cards, everything that you do is in all caps. They have created a corporation out of you and on the checks in order for it to be valid, the authorized signature of that corporate account needs to sign it. What do you know about fine print? When they put fine print on a document, the finer the print, the more important it is to them and the more they don't want you asking any questions about. I have run into almost nobody that knew that that signature was on there unless they were part of some type of a patriot movement. And it's hidden in plain sight because it has MP right behind it which stands for microprinting. But nobody seems to catch this because it's hidden in plain sight. So the corporate identity thing is basically like me sneaking into your room when you're a baby or sneaking in with your mother at the hospital when you were born and basically stealing your identity and creating a corporation that you're actually the owner of, okay, but you don't even know that it exists. And then the initial public offering of that corporate entity is offered through a birth certificate bond. You can get as many copies, certified copies of your birth certificate as you want, but you can't get the original. Why can't you? The, the reason you can't get the original is because it was sold on the securities exchange as an initial public offering. I was born in the mid-50s and the initial public offering of my birth certificate bond was sold on the securities exchange for about $600,000 in 1955. I have a two-year-old. The initial public offering of a two-year-old these days is about $2 million. It really is identity theft. All of these original security bonds, okay, that are crude value as they're used in commerce, and the value of the bonds go up are actually held in each of the Federal Reserves all around the country. Now, a bond yields its profit to the person who is in possession of it when it matures. Guess when your birth certificate bond matures? When you die. And when you die, the person who, or the, the corporation that's holding the bond will keep all the profit that that bond has generated. At my age, uh, with the, the amount of commerce that I've done and the business that I have run, it's an estimate that I probably got between five and ten million dollars is the actual value of my current bond. But because I'm not in possession of it and I'm not even supposed to know that it exists, all those assets based on my identity have done me no good whatsoever. So how did we get into this mess? When we were being formed as colonies, it took a lot of money to get all the supplies and ships and everything over here to, to form the 13 colonies. British bankers and the British crown put up a lot of dough. 
Well, they were happy to put up the dough because as long as they owned the colonies, they knew that the resources of this over here would pay them back a, a very good return on their investment. But when we broke away from them, now they had no return on their investment and they had a legitimate claim of debt against us. If we weren't going to be theirs anymore, we needed to repay them for what they had infested to get the colony started. It was a legitimate debt that we owed when we were formed. There are sentences in the Constitution that read that the debts under the Confederacy are continued under this Constitution. So the Constitution is also an agreement of debt to the British and to the French because we asked the French to help us defeat the British and they wanted to be paid back for their military expenditures. So we basically were broke when we became a country and what we didn't know, or I didn't know, is that the bank note when other countries loan to a country is a 70 year note. So the 70 year note comes due when Lincoln is president. They don't have the money under Lincoln to pay off the note. So Lincoln doesn't want to give the public lands of the 13 colonies and, and the public lands of the Louisiana Purchase back to the Europeans in a foreclosure. He'd rather have that not happen on his watch. So he says to the European bankers, can we renegotiate the loan? And they said, well, we might do that, but we're going to want some upfront money. We're going to want better terms, and we're going to want more collateral. Under Lincoln, there were now 34 republics, many of which were not you know, part of the original 13, weren't part of the Louisiana Purchase. And um, he went to them because what the European bankers wanted was they wanted the public lands of all 34 republics to be held as collateral against the new national debt for the next 70 years. Well, when the southern states heard that they were being asked to do this in a war that they hadn't fought in uh, for collateral to bankers and they didn't like the terms, they basically said they're not going to do it and they seceded. The real reason for the Civil War and the cessation of the states was over the collateralizing of the public lands of those republics. Slavery might have been an issue and various other things. <coughs> State rights was involved in it, but it was really over the collateralizing of the public lands, and they weren't going to do it. Now Lincoln has a problem. He no longer has a quorum to convene Congress. He can't renegotiate the loan because he has no power to pass any laws. So he had an idea. And I think it was the best idea he could come up with because he was in a pretty bad spot. He started a corporation, the Act of 1871, which basically gave him the ability to form an all uppercase United States of America corporation with a physical jurisdiction of the District of Columbia, which was where they had the authority to do business, and he reconvened Congress as a corporation. As a reconvened corporation, he was able to renegotiate the debt fight the war and get the southern states to sign uh, under duress because some of the governors even after the war with threat of military action against the state capitals had their governors forcibly replaced. Once that was done and all the collateral was in for the European bankers, I think Lincoln probably intended to shut the corporation back down is my guess, but he was killed before he could do it because they realized that this was a sweet opportunity to get around the Constitution. <laughs> All right, so 70 years go by, and now we're up to the time of the Great Depression. We're up to the time when the rich elite uh, go to Jekyll Island and they look for a way to permanently get a central bank into the American economy. If you have a central bank, the bankers who control the currency make a fortune off of the resources of the people. 
There have been several failed attempts at having a permanent central bank in the American history, and they'd always been rooted out and defeated after a short period of time. So this time they wanted to make it a little bit more permanent. So in, I think in 1912, they agreed that they'd fire it up in, uh, 20 years later, which would have been 1932. They also understood that if they were going to pull this thing off, what had defeated it in the past was people's knowledge of it being unconstitutional. So they somehow were going to have to control the people. So the same people that put together the concept of Federal Reserve Bank also looked at how many newspapers they would have to buy to control the minds and the knowledge of the people. They determined that they needed to buy 21 newspapers and change the editors into their editors who would only print things in those newspapers that would cover up what was really being done to the people. So they have controlled, so we have not had a free press in the United States going all the way back to when newspapers really was the press all the way back to about 1912. These same people, when radio kicked in, bought the radio stations. The same people have bought the television stations and the satellite and the cable stations. The knowledge that we are sharing here today has been spread abroad to at least 30 million Americans because of the internet. They haven't been able to control the internet like they have the newspapers, the television, and the radio since 1912. So the the ability for us to go all around the state and all around the country and find people that are aware of these deceptions is because of the internet. So the internet is bringing down the corporation. Now, uh, <coughs> so in 1929, they crashed the economy, 28, they, they, uh, uh, they redistribute the wealth back there's, they take away the gold by making us enemy combatants and they give us worthless Federal Reserve notes for our gold, made it illegal to own gold, bullion. Um, they wanted additional collateral for the next 70 year term. They already had all the public lands. What do they want this time? They want the private lands. So they never put it to a vote to the American people that, hey, we don't want to be foreclosed on so would you all mind having your private lands, houses, and farms put up as collateral against the national debt so we can spend foolishly for another 70 years and make ourselves rich as politicians at the expense and the risk of your private property? They never asked us that. They just did it. Okay? So by 1933, they had collateralized our sweat equity through birth certificates and made commercial entities out of us and stolen our identity. They had also put our private property up for collateral against the European debt. Some very, very brave people from 33 to 38 took the government to court for fraud, for doing these things. These court cases went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled that what the corporation had done to the American people was fraud. It was fraud for two basic reasons. There wasn't full disclosure. If I can prove that your grandpa made a deal with my grandpa and that he didn't fully disclose the terms, there is no statute of limitations on fraud. Also, it was fraudulent because there wasn't consideration two days. Will you wash my car every day and wax it once a week, and in exchange for that, I will give you nothing? Contract? No contract. There's no consideration going both ways. If I say I'll give you a penny a week, and you agree to it, now we have a binding contract. It's a really sweet deal for me, but it's still consideration both ways. So the Supreme Court told the government that they had put our private lands at risk if they defaulted on the loan and that there had not been full disclosure and there was no consideration to us for using our identities to, to be the backing of all the money and to put up our private property for collateral and others, that we had been given nothing in exchange for all that risk. So there had to be full disclosure.
So there had to be full disclosure, and they had to give some consideration. I'm sure they ran an ad in the legal newspaper somewhere, so now we've got, we've got the disclosure out of the way, okay? And they said to the Supreme Court, if any of the American people submit any debt to the Treasury, not purchases, but debt, we will pay their debt out of the large sums of money that we are holding in their birth certificate bond. And that was okay with the Supreme Court. Now they don't honor that, and they don't advertise that. Their own Supreme Court has said that we should have the ability, because of what they have done to us, that our consideration is, is you should be able to take your mortgage, your car payment, submit it to the Treasury, and it's paid out of your birth certificate bond because whatever debts you could ever rack up, it's a drop in the bucket to the amount of money that they have made off of your identity since your birth. If they solved all my financial problems, it wouldn't be 1% of what they have made off of me and they're going to keep the rest when I die. Like they kept all the rest of my mother and my grandfather. So. That's why on the checks there's authorized signature because we as sovereign human beings are a higher life form than a corporation. In order for them to control us, they had to have parity. So they threw birth certificates, driver's licenses, license plates, marriage licenses, social security cards, voter registration. <coughs> Titles for your cars, titles for your land. You get a deed of trust which says right of tenancy and right of assignment. Tenants where we get the word tenant from, tenancy. Sure. The personal property tax is us paying the owners of the property for us being tenants. Isn't that a wonderful concept? Now, so all of this has happened to us and the Patriot Movement has been fragmented and have been around for uh, maybe 20 years and they've tried to use commercial law, they've tried to use maritime law, they've tried to use common law to get some remedy, to get some constitutional rights back to the people in opposition of what the corporation has done. The corporation exists at the federal, the state, and the county levels. It's, it's throughout. It's all corporate. The judicial system all have uh, ITN numbers. It is a corporation court system. The court system upholds the contract of the corporation against your corporate identity. It's really a sweet deal for them. So the Patriot Movement really never was able to get much remedy because the, 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 the courts are rigged against the, the truth being they don't honor their, their own laws. So about two years ago, we don't know whether the Patriot Movement approached the military or the military approached the Patriot Movement, but somehow this kind of uh, conversation took place. Maybe it went something like this. Hey, military, you know you're serving a corporation? and they're not treating the people under the Constitution, and they got you doing things that aren't constitutional, and the military said, yeah, we know. But you, the people, advocated the republic. And we, the military, are not going to start a coup. Okay? So, yeah, we know. We don't have anybody else to serve. Then the, maybe the military said, but you know what? Maybe if the republic got re-inhabited, we'd eventually salute them as the true commander-in-chief. So a plan was put together and it all hinged on the Fifth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment is the amendment that talks about grand juries. We have all been completely delusionally tricked into believing that grand juries are formed when a judge a paid judge or a paid prosecutor pulls a pool of people together, gives them instructions, filters what they can witness, tells them what the president is, and tells them what they're obligated to do. And grand juries are only formed at the behest of the judge or the prosecutor. Excuse me. 
But under the Fifth Amendment, we are all prosecutors. Under the Fifth Amendment, any time you get 27 of us together, or according to the rules of your republic, you can bring two witnesses, bring a presentment against any public official, and that person must now go under trial. It's called a true bill. The power of the Fifth Amendment was discovered, rediscovered, by various patriot movements that came together and pulled their following so that we could get a grand jury in all 50 republics at one time to hear the same case. And the case that they came up with was that the governors are guilty of being elected by the people, but treating the people as corporate entities, working for a corporation, and not obeying the state constitution and the constitution of the republic. And the finding of these grand juries was that they had seven days to resign or lose their option to hold office. And after seven days, the lieutenant governor had seven days. Then after seven days, the third person in line had the option. So within 21 days, if nobody repented, resigned, and retook the oath to the Constitution of the State and the Republic to do the right thing, within 21 days they had acquiesced. Acquiescence means that you have a certain period of time in order to do the honorable thing, to fulfill your obligations and make remedy, and if you acquiesce, then under common law, the, the dishonored party now has the option of coming up with their own remedy. So after a month or two had gone by and none of the governors um, had done the right thing and they had all acquiesced, the 50 grand juries came together again and according to the truth and the power of the Declaration of Independence provided the remedy of if they're not going to inhabit the offices of the Republic that had been abandoned since 71, they were not dissolved they were just sitting dormant, that we would come together and re-inhabit them. And all 50 grand juries unanimously voted to put together a provisional government, just like the Founding Fathers did, elect provisional president, vice president, congressmen, senators, governors, judges, and put the whole thing back together lawfully, peacefully, constitutionally. And they did this and that's been months ago. That Congress has met as a Continental Congress in Utah. They put together documents that have been delivered to The Hague. There's over 80 to 90 nations that are dealing with this restored republic as the continuation of the original government of the Founding Fathers. They understand that the corporation is just a corporation and has not treated them too kindly with their Federal Reserve notes and all their military might. We are in the process right now as a republic of putting together compacts which are more powerful than just treaties with between 20 and 30 of these 80 nations for peace. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we are at the place now where we've got about 45 of the 50 republics hanging together to pass mustard for the military and for the international community to say they've really got their act together and they are going to be able to run the entire country. Originally, the concept two years ago was that this republic would peacefully coexist alongside the corporation and have the rights of the republic that we are, just like the Lakota. Indians have IDs. If I'm driving my truck down the road before I was in the Republic and my, my mud flap was torn and my taillight was out, the DOK could have given me hundreds of dollars worth of tickets. If they pull over a Lakota Indian with Lakota ID, they say, have a nice day. He's not in their jurisdiction. They're their own nation. They have their own laws, their own enforcement, their own everything. Okay? If a Lakota Indian gets messed with by some podic, he doesn't fight the battle with the podunk, the nation fights it. And they win because they're internationally recognized. 
That has been established for us and is being finalized. We thought as a republic you could join us, get your IDs, and peacefully coexist, get rid of your debt, get rid of the IRS, get rid of property taxes, okay, uh, get out of, of the need for contracts for driver's licenses and marriage licenses, and get back to constitutional freedom. Problem, okay, the corporation has run itself broke. It's at high risk of collapsing. And we find out that this is by design. They used 9-11 to put the Patriot Act in, which is the biggest usurping of our constitutional due process rights ever conceived, and to start some wars that would put our military far away from our continent. So our military is, is barely here and is mostly elsewhere. And in the last couple of years, they have secretly moved in a lot of United Nations troops. Their intent is to crash the dollar, crash the stock market, just like they did in 28. 28, 27, 28, okay. And, and basically there'll be unrest because the money will be worth nothing. And then they'll go, oh my gosh, we have riots. Please, United Nations, come and save us. Miraculously, the next day, the troops are already here, and our military can't help us because they're all over the globe. So this is the big plan. This is the big plan, okay? So what the Republic is faced with now is not the prospect of being able to peacefully coexist with the corporation as we grow over the next five to seven years and people realize they can join us instead of being a corporate slave and our numbers would grow naturally. What we're faced with now is the military and the international community looking at us and scrutinizing and saying, are you ready to run the country when the corporation fails, which is soon, so that the military can back us and tell the United Nations to take a flying leap at a rolling donut and get out of our country. We are trying to get the final states together and we are trying to get all of the official documents and the court of records and everything filled in all the republics so that the military will finally say, we will back you 100% because we believe that you are in place and can run the country when the corporation folds. Our Chief Justice, Nathan Peachy, put out a letter dated January the 11th. I can't read the whole thing to you. I read the first and last paragraph. The serious complaint and grave violations of constitutional rights and privileges by the county, state, and federal corporations disclosed as foreign sovereigns uh, committed against the American peoples and parties of the free independent republics okay, of, of the United States of America Constitution has been prepared for filing from the office of the Republic Attorney General. They're basically going to convene a national grand jury with a juror from all 50 republics very soon. And the case that they're going to be hearing is evidence that the corporation is planning the collapse of the economy to bring in United States troops. It may even involve uh, United Nations troops and it may even involve the use of mustard gas and phosgene gas. The estimation is that 100 million Americans could die in order for this country to no longer be a threat to the new world order. And what will precipitate that ground war is the financial crash. And our military is not here to help us. The last paragraph says the security team at this near event will consist of the military, law enforcement officials, and American Rangers who work for us, who will administer surveillance and security during this event. Okay. So in the very near future, I believe that the military is going to not only be providing security for this, as reserve notes are. So he put Executive Order 111100 together in 1963 authorizing the U.S. Treasury to print notes, to print dollars, not notes, backed by silver, and they were starting to be put into the banks. He printed billions, I think it's 10 billion of fives and tens, and, and I think five or 10 billion of 20 dollars. 
this money was begun to be put out into the banks and they killed him. Why? Who in their right mind would take their paycheck in 1963-64 and get Federal Reserve notes for their paycheck worth nothing or get Treasury notes backed by silver? For every Treasury note that was used, the usury, the rent, taxes, which is what everything the IRS collects is, is basically just the usury for the money, would have come to an end. The central bank would have come to an end. The cash flow to the European rich and to the bankers and the crooked politicians would have come to an end. So they whacked him. That money's been sitting there since 63, and not one president has touched it since then. Maybe they're afraid of being whacked. Or maybe they've got a large enough financial interest in what's going on that it's just, you know, business as usual. Democrat, Republican, doesn't make any difference. They're all understanding what's going on. Most of the civil servants, not at the top, think they're serving the people. I guarantee you that the people at the top know what's going on, and by being a part of what's going on, it's made them far more money up, up and above their salaries. How will the transition take place? We are hoping and praying that the corporation realizes that the military is getting ready to switch. They have made contact with our interim president, James Timothy Turner, and have begun negotiations for a peaceful transfer in exchange for amnesty, for forgiveness. Okay. Um, if those negotiations can go well enough, we'll be able to put the Treasury notes out into circulation before the Federal Reserve notes go to zero. We had thought a year ago that the value exchange rate from the Treasury notes from the Federal Reserve notes would be 10 cents on the dollar or 20 cents on the dollar. We now believe that the value of the Federal Reserve notes is so broken that there's not going to be an exchange rate at all. But if we can get the Treasury notes in place so people can begin to have them in their possession, then when the Federal Reserve notes crash, people will still have buying power. If we can't work that out, eventually the, the United States uh, uh, Federal Reserve notes will be gone. Nobody's checking accounts or credit cards are going to work. Everything that you have in CDs or money market is going to be worth zero, and IRA is the same way. Some stops might make it. Many stocks won't. This is going to be a rough transition. So how do you prepare for it at a personal level? You need to at least minimally have 30 days worth of canned food, canned meats, pastas, grains, rice, fruits, vegetables, everything. You're not going to go to the grocery store perhaps for a month. You need to have water. The reason I recommend canned goods is maybe there will be problems with the electric. If you can get a knife, you can open a can and you can dine. Okay? Uh, if you have assets, you need to take a serious look at what my family has done. We have gotten rid of all of our IRAs, money markets, and CDs, and we have bought pre-1964 silver coin in the denomination of dimes and quarters so that it can be used for barter, and it's 90% silver, and whenever the new currency is put back out, we'll be able to exchange the silver that we bought with Federal Reserve notes for the new currency. Almost everybody says that when the paper money, Federal Reserve notes disappear, that the value of silver is going to go up. Especially if the new currency is going to be backed in Treasury notes by silver and gold, which it is because that is the intent of the Republic. We won't have to print the initial amount of money. It's in warehouses and we have found it. So, um, where we're at today is we need 12 people minimally in each county of Missouri to ratify a county settlement document 
which basically maintains that members of the republic who reside in that county have ratified a document taking the entire land mass of that county away from the DC corporation and giving it back to the people. So I'm four hours away from home today creating a video so that you can get at least 12 people together in this county and the counties that you represent to join the republic to ratify the county settlement document and lawfully constitutionally take the land of the county back from the corporations. This video will be on the web page and I hope that you will spread it like peanut butter because I can't travel the state. We can't, there's 105 counties in this state. We're thrilled to be here, but there's a limit to my voice box. There's a limit to my personal funds to buy gasoline to fund these trips. That's why the basket is out fuel free. Okay. Um, this video should be up on our webpage, which is re MissouriRepublic.org. Okay. And take this video, email it to everybody, and let's try to get 12 people in every county of this state. Anybody you know, anywhere in the state, get them to watch the video, help them get signed up, and let's get every county reclaimed. As the National is working on getting the five remaining states, which is going to be the trigger for the military to salute us, this case will go forward in the next short period of time. And if we've got the backing of the military, things can begin to change quite quickly. We're praying for a peaceful transition We've offered absolute amnesty and forgiveness to all the corporate players, which is bringing them to the table because they are afraid for their lives. We have heard in the last two months, there have been over a million applications for overseas visas from people that live in the District of Columbia. Ever heard of the concept of rats leaving a sinking ship? Okay, so this is where we're at. We need the Republic to be stronger in Missouri. We still have some positions to fill. We need to be praying with all of our might for the additional five states to get completely seated so that the federal government can say they really have restored the Republic. We're recognized by other nations. We're recognized by the Hague. But the military's not going to back a horse that doesn't have its act together. The more people we have, the more we can pull together absolute proof that we pass mustard and we are ready to run this state and ready to run this country. Time is short. The UN troops are here. The dollar is about as fragile as an egg on the top of the Empire State Building. And plans are made for bad things to happen. The United States is a country and its people who hang on to their guns and hang on to their dreams of the Constitution are the biggest threat to about 20 nations who want the New World Order. The other 80 nations don't. They want to whittle down the American people so that the New World Order can be brought forth. The Republic can stop it. We need you to sign up today and get a red thumb. This is your God-given ID, not your Social Security card or your birth certificate and none of that wonderful corporate stuff. It's your God-given ID and the name that your mommy and daddy give you. If you use your full name and give us your thumbprint and swear an oath, you can become part of the Republic today and you can sign a Jural Covenant, which basically says that you are going to Republic with us. Republic is also a verb. Congregate is a verb. People are congregating. A bunch of people are gathered, but we don't know what they're doing. But if we republic together, what we're saying is that we have gathered to lawfully support each other's constitutional rights. I'm inviting you to republic with us. Sign the paperwork, okay? I want to throw it open for any questions that you have now that would that you need answered before you would sign up. And then once we get those questions answered, we're going to go to another part of the room and start signing people up 
and I will continue to answer questions for anybody that has them. Okay? And then once you have joined the Republic, you're probably going to have a different set of questions, which would sound something like, I'm part of the Republic now, I have a red thumb, what do I need to do? The first answer to that question is get this video and share it with everybody yesterday. Okay, not that it's the best presentation on the planet. Please take it and put together a better one and spread it around like peanut butter. But we've got to get this thing done. We do not have months. We have weeks, maybe a month. We're getting down to the wire on this stuff. So what questions do you have? All right, well, I'd like to uh, thank you all for coming here today. My name is Mark Hafner, and uh, I'm a senator here with the Republic uh, for the United States uh, in Missouri. And uh, this is a 4th of July kind of an update to the first video we did back in January 15th down in Ozark, Missouri. And I um, want to tell you right off that this video may not be the one you should watch first. Uh, if, if I tell you that your birth certificate, your marriage license, uh, your driver's license, uh, your social security card, marriage licenses, and, and uh, voter registration, all these things have made you a corporate entity and put you under commercial law, and you really don't have the protection of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights anymore at all. And in those privileges that they've granted you through these licenses, they have total control of adjusting the privileges and fining you if you don't follow their deals. So if you don't understand any of that, and if you also don't understand that our Republican form of government that was given to us by the Constitution and by the Founding Fathers actually ended in 1861 by the lawyer who happened to occupy the White House named Abraham Lincoln, and they reconvened the running of this country as a corporation total fraudulently done, and that, that, that has trickled down to every state and and local government, every courthouse are now just corporations. If you don't understand that, you need to watch the first video first. Uh, it's called The Change Your Founders Believed In, Republic of Missouri. It can be found on Patriots Unite Now uh, YouTube site, uh, or you can find it on the education page of the republicforarizona.org website. For those of you that have seen the first video, this is gonna be a 4th of July update uh, with a short review and also answer some questions that have come in on the internet. Uh, so the, the quick review is, in 1861, what was happening in the country was the international bankers working with the lawyer in the White House wanted the rest of the public lands of all the additional republics to be added to the collateral for the national debt for the next 70 years. And the southern states said, we're not giving you our public lands as collateral. And they seceded. Well, when they seceded, Lincoln, the lawyer, says, no problem, we'll just start a corporation and reconvene, and they did. The reason I'm bringing that up, because it's covered in detail in the first video, is when they reconvened, the seats of the Republic, the President and the Congress, those seats were vacated. They weren't abolished, they were, they were vacated. What we have done last year in 2010 is we have re-inhabited those seats. That's what has happened. This is a historical event and it's impacting the whole planet. Um, uh, everything that's been done since then, and, 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 and there's a lot of stuff that's been done, uh, it's all been done fraudulently, it's all been done um, uh, to the American people to basically put the wealth and the power into the hands of crooked politicians and, and even more so into the hands of the international wealthy. Um, this fraud deception runs deep. Uh, one of the criticisms of the first video is, well, we need more details. Do you understand that there's been over a hundred years of deception? And in this hundred years, they have done so many things for what they say to the public is one reason, and what they've actually done is for another reason. And, and it would take you literally weeks of videos with, you know, hundreds of slides of documentation from archives and certified copies from archives 
to document all this stuff, but the documentation is there. So one of the things they get is, well, this couldn't possibly be true. Americans aren't that stupid. No, we're not stupid, so how did they do this? There had been <clears throat> several attempts at putting a central bank into this country from the founding of our country, and they were all very short-lived. And the reason they were short-lived, because there was a few politicians that weren't on the tape with the bankers, and we had a free press. So between the free press and the few politicians that would speak out against the central bank as being completely, totally unconstitutional, and every one of them has been, the public understood through the newspapers that it was wrong and public opinion demanded that the central bank be put back down. So they understood that if they were really going to get all the money out of the country and really suck us as dry as they wanted to, that they were going to have to get a central bank installed in this country and it was going to have to stick. It couldn't just live for a few years. So they put together a long-term strategy. And their long-term strategy started probably before this, but they all met on Jekyll Island in 1912. And the international rich and the American wealthy, like uh, the Rockefellers and uh, oh, various other families, and I'm just tired, and forgive me if I muddle some names, okay? Uh, the J.P. Morgans of, 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 of the world got together, and they put together a 20-year strategy to put together the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve Act went through, it was concocted in 1912, didn't actually go through until 20 years later. What they did during that 20 years, starting in 1912, was they got together, these, these rich people, and they bought 25 of the largest newspapers in the United States. And they replaced all the editors. And they told these editors strict rules of what they would say about central banks, about the economy, about the Constitution, about all this stuff. And then when they intentionally crashed the economy in 1929, then the newspapers are saying, oh, well, if we only would have had the Federal Reserve, if we only would have had the Central Bank, we wouldn't be all in bread lines, and we wouldn't have all lost all these jobs, and the crash wouldn't have happened. It was all manufactured. It was a false flag. If you don't know what a false flag is, you need to do some research. And so the American people who had been dumbed down by a controlled media for 20 years begged for the Fed to come through. Please save us from this poverty. Well, the deception continued after that. When radio stations began to have more uh, of an impact on American information and culture than newspapers, they bought the, the radio stations, and they bought the TV stations, and they bought the satellite and the cable TVs. And it all goes back, and do a Google search called, Who Owns the Media? Council on Foreign Relations. And you'll get some wonderful information. You don't go anywhere in politics. You don't go anywhere in media in this country unless you're a part with the Council on Foreign Relations. The international bankers, the American bankers, the politicians, and the broadcasters, all behind closed doors orchestrating what we believe and what we're told. Ah, but a new form of media has come out. It's called the internet. And they haven't been able to replace the editor of the internet just yet. They're working on it. But because the internet's been around for a while, there's literally millions of Americans that understand the stuff that we're talking about in the first video and many other videos and in Canada and Australia and, and over in England and all over the world. Anywhere there's a central bank, anywhere the Federal Reserve's involved in any way, shape, or form, you're being sucked the money right out of you. And they don't deserve it and it's all done through fraud. So, um, the media of the internet has been their downfall. Now, the American people have been lied to for over a hundred years. And if that's true, they bear some responsibility because we trusted them. Well, maybe we could have investigated it, but they've tried very hard to bury the correct information, to change the histories in public schools, and, and they've worked really hard on this deception. So, shame on them, they fooled us once. But now that there's millions of Americans that understand this, and we have support from around the world and other countries, now it's different. Now if we don't do something, we have acquiesced. Acquiescence is, hey, I'm going to come over and sit on your lap in five minutes. And if I say that in front of these witnesses and he says nothing, 
and five minutes from now I'd go over there and sit on his lap. He's really got no beef with me because he didn't protest. He didn't say no. He acquiesced. He actually, in the in the presence of witnesses, gave me permission to sit on his lap because he didn't protest. He didn't say no. I don't want you to do that. That's not the right thing to do. Now I'm not going to go sit on his lap just for the record. But that's what acquiescence is. We have millions of Americans that know the video content of the first video in January and other videos that are out there. The internet media that is free has explained this with a lot of documentation that this is all true. If we don't rise up and do something about it now, we deserve whatever the bankers give us. We've acquiesced. It is time for us to unite and to do something. Now, as far as I'm concerned, because I have nine children and seven grandchildren, I don't want on my conscience that I understood this stuff and didn't work hard to stop it from continuing because their future plans for our country are not very good. Their future plans for our prosperity and for our freedoms are not very good. I don't want it on my conscience, so I'm trying to work hard to bring change. What about you? Have you all joined the Republic? All of you watching the video, have you, have you joined the Republic? Okay, have you taken the first video? Will you take this video? Will you take what resources you have and continue to learn? Are you too busy to learn? Are you too busy to research to do any work? Sometimes people say, oh, I'd like to know more about this. I give them 12 lousy pages to read that I paid for to print. And they said to me, oh, you want me to read all of that? Yeah, I want you to read. I want you to spend some hours on this. This is the freedoms of your family, the freedoms of your children, the freedoms of your grandchildren. It may even have a lot to do with your physical safety in the near future. Yeah, I want you to read. I want you to research. All right. Um, so here we are on the 4th of July and uh, 2011. And um, I want to give you uh, an update. Many other nations around the world, the list is over 130, are ready to partner with us and peace compacts are being negotiated. Um, we now have all 50 republics in union verified with documentation that is satisfactory to the international community. That's huge. That's huge. This has all been done peacefully since the middle of 2010. We have met all the standards and requirements for the funding of our restored republic. It's all in place. That's huge. So what will happen next? Uh, when international recognition finally becomes public knowledge, and we don't expect it to break in the press here, we expect it to probably break in the press in Europe. That's, that's our guess. We don't know. Um, when we have international recognition, we'll have international enforcement. And then we'll have national recognition and national enforcement. And then it'll trickle down to state. It'll trickle down to county and eventually to large cities, to small cities, and then all the way down to Barney Fife. Okay? How long is that process going to take? I don't know. It's going to take some time. When's it going to start? Soon, I hope and pray. But it's going to take some time. Once we have that recognition, okay, then we're going to have not just remedy, but we're actually going to have cure. A lot of the remedy that people have tried to do in the Patriot Movement would work for this guy's mortgage or this guy's IRS case or this guy's trumped up charge for some uh, revenue seeking deal, but nobody's actually had across the board remedy. And a lot of people have been thrown in jail for trying to mess up their cash flow. When we get the international recognition and international enforcement trickles all the way down, we won't have problems like that anymore. This is going to be a cure. We won't have to fight for remedy in 20 areas where we've been abused by corporate governments. We'll have the cure for all of them. That's why we're working internationally. Now, we are a provisional government, and we have the authority to re-inhabit what was abandoned in 1861. Uh, we are cautious to make any changes uh, on major issues until we have full recognition and full enforcement. Uh, at the right time, elections will be held and we will move from provisional to permanent. The reason we're provisional is we had to prove to the international community that we had actually re-inhabited the presidency and the Congress 
and the governors, we had to show them that we the people had no longer acquiesced and that we had stood up, we were organized, we were documented, we were unified, and that they could recognize us as the re-inhabited Founding Fathers Republic and they could begin to participate with us. So we had to have a provisional government place to prove that. We understand that a few hundred people in each state doesn't give an election to all the people that live there, but millions of people weren't involved to start this. Sorry, only hundreds, only dozens. So when the American people all know about the Republic and everybody wants to join it that does, then there will be an election that will be permanent. And then many changes that probably need to be changed from the government of 1861 to now can be looked at then. But everything that we've needed to establish has been done. Okay? There's no road map on how to do this. It's not like we found the DNA in one of the founding fathers and we could reduce him and he could tell us how all this stuff worked at the state, federal, and city level and how it all worked together. And a lot of the information of how the Republic really worked has been destroyed and hidden or burned in fires that were uh, planted. And, and, and none of the American people have really learned the real difference between the practical functioning of a democracy versus a Republic. We haven't seen it in our lifetime. So we've got a lot of learning that we need to do. Um, so pray for us. Some of you were saying, oh, well, they shouldn't have done it this way or they shouldn't have done it that way. Like I said, there's no roadmap. We have done the best we could, piecing the history together all the way to back to the 1861 so that we could do this. And we've done it well enough that 130 nations recognize us. And we've got funding. That's huge. That's just huge. So we haven't screwed it up so bad that we failed. But, but it has not been an easy thing. So we are re-inhabiting a republic form of government. And you really need to study the difference between a republic form of government and a democracy for, for main reasons. You may be elected to one of the offices in your county, or in your city, or in your township. If you don't understand the difference between a republic and a democracy, you won't serve correctly. And if you don't end up holding office at some level, you won't know correctly how to interface with the people that represent you. So you need to bone up on this. You need to study this. All right, how are things going at the county level? All the three branches of government, legislative, executive, judicial, and the supporting staff is established at the national level and at the state levels, and it's progressing nicely. Okay, and a lot of committee work is being done. A lot of things are being done. But at the county level, we're still making very slow progress. Okay, It takes between 50 and 90 members in the Republic to really get a Republican form of government established in a county. You've got to have elections that elect the legislative, the executive, and the judicial branch and the support staff that they need in those branches. That's 40, 50 people, give or take. And then you're going to become a court of record with a judge. And the court of record needs a grand jury. The grand jury poll should be a group of 40 to 50 people that doesn't necessarily hold public office because everybody's going to be too busy for that. So you need somewhere between 50 and 100 people per county to be in the Republic so that you can set up a Republican form of government in every county like we already have it in every state Republic and nationally. So you know when we need to do that? Like yesterday. A lot of people say to me, oh, well, when we get our funding, then I'll recruit in my county. Or, oh, well, when I see this or I see that, then I'll go, okay, let me ask you a question. And have you ever had a baby come home to your house? I've had nine. Do you build the nursery for the baby after the baby comes home? That's when you buy the baby bed. That's when you buy the diapers. That's when you buy the butt goo. No, you put the nursery all together and it's all ready for the baby. And it sits ready but unused until the baby is born. Just like that, the international recognition enforcement and national recognition enforcement is going to trickle down. And we've got one grand jury in Missouri to handle the cases of 7 million Missourians? That might cause a bit of a backlog. 
Well, how are the people in your county going to deal with the injustices of traffic tickets and things like that if they don't have a court of record in the county? They're going to have to go up to the only uh, constitutional uh, 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 de jure um, court system we have, which is currently state. So we've got to get busy. You've got to recruit, okay? When everything is in place at the county level, you can't just start running out and, 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 and trying to arrest people that aren't acting right. We don't have the enforcement internationally. We don't, we don't have the recognition. But we shouldn't wait to do that. We should be doing that right now. <clears throat> A big part of the slowdown at the county level, it didn't happen at the national level too much. It didn't happen at the state level very much at all. But at the county level, it's been a problem. When we're trying to go out and get counties to have 50, 70, 100 members in their county, we're beginning to run into a lot of patriot groups, and we're thrilled. And we have Tea Party people coming in, or we have Promise Keepers people. We have all kinds of different stuff, but it's fine. But a lot of the patriot groups are so married and so opinionated with certain concepts that there's only one right way to do this thing, that they won't unite, that they won't unite. They want to pick, well, you're still using the word state. Or you're still using the word citizen. Or used of instead of for. Guys, the enemy is out there. The enemy is, is the corporate governments that have made slaves out of all of us. We need to forget our absolute perfect methodology of doing something and band together and get, get these um, counties settled with county settlement constitution documents it only takes 12 people to ratify the county settlement constitution and take the land back. But with 12 people, you can't set up three branches of government. Okay, so we need to we need to get uh, we need to understand that this is just provisional at the state, the nation, and at the county level. And once permanent elections are done, then people can really take the time to do the research. And to perfect it, to do it right, we'll have funding and we'll have staff. Right now, everybody that's working, there is no funding, there is no staff. Everybody's doing all this on their own dime. So rather than saying, until it's perfect or until we have a perfect leader, we won't unite, hey, that's the same as acquiescing. We're going to fail. Now we're not going to fail. But do we want, it, we want it to be hard on the American people? when the transition hits? Or do we want to demonstrate to the American people that those of us that knew about this ahead of time have gotten busy and got this together so that when they need justice and it's actually there for them, we've got it in place. Do you think well of a mommy and daddy that bring home a baby and they've got nothing but a dresser drawer? No diapers? No, that's going to happen. This baby's coming home. Are you ready for the Republic County Freedom Baby? to arrive in your county, get ready. Now, we have these two videos. This one, which is kind of an update, and we're gonna do some Q&A. And, and you can, if you live in a county where there aren't 90 people, first off, you sign the Republic if you haven't, okay? And once you join the Republic, if you live in a county where there aren't 90 people, it's your job to recruit the other 89. Stop waiting for somebody else. Take these videos. There's other videos out there in other republics that you can use to have meetings, to send them out, to email them. And let's become the 600-pound gorilla sitting over in the corner of the room that can no longer be ignored by the international community. As our numbers grow, we earn the respect of the international community, our own military, and even the corporate, uh, corporate government. They're still hoping we'll fall apart. They're still hoping we'll continue to act with us. The larger we grow, the more they understand. We ain't going away. It's time for this to be fixed. Now, I've got some um, questions that came in through the internet, and uh, there's a lot. We're just gonna take a few of them. Uh, question number one. Um, how's their timeline from video one? Some of the things that we talked about in video one haven't happened, and some of the things we talked about in video one were pretty hideous things. Okay, we talked about ground wars and things like that. My opinion is here on the 4th of July in 2011, 
that what we have done with the Republic has really messed up their plans for the American people. Okay? And I think that a lot of things that they've wanted to do, they haven't been able to do, but they still have the power to do some pretty awful things. So I don't know how and when everything's going to happen. And I wasn't trying to lay out in video one an absolute definite time frame of when things would happen. I believe that the Republic has messed up what the international bankers and corrupt, corrupt politicians have tried to do, and many of the things that they would have done, we've, we've messed them up real bad. But they're still in the chess game, so don't count them out. That's why we need to grow. That's why we need to recruit. Uh, question number two, uh, I'm not sure that I trust Tim Turner. I'm here to tell you about Tim Turner. I've met him. I've spent time with him. He is a flawed man. <gasps> Just like you, just like me. If we're waiting for a perfect leader to come along and follow, we'll, we'll never get our act together. Does he love this country? Does he love the American people? Is he a good moral man with, with good moral character? Is he a man of integrity? Has he made mistakes? And when he makes mistakes, does he admit he's made mistakes and try to make amends? Absolutely. I trust him. I've met him. I've met Nathan Peachy, the Chief Justice. I've met... Uh, uh, many of the people at the national level because every time there's been a national event I've mostly been there. You know, you hear a guy talk in a meeting is one thing. You follow him to the bathroom and talk to him uh, while you're taking care of some business. You get past that public face and you find out what the man's really about. These people that are doing this are spending a lot of money and a lot of time. I trust them. Maybe you don't trust me. Okay, fine. If we don't unite, the corporation wins. You like being a slave, just keep throwing stones at what we've done. Just keep complaining about the, the, the foibles or, or, or you don't like how I comb my hair. Go ahead. And I'm not trying to be defensive here. I'm just trying to help you understand. They have or been orchestrating this for 100 years. If we don't understand that the enemy is out there and unite and get involved and get busy, that's a bad way to play chess. This is a very important chess game. Next question is, uh, I'm in Texas. How can I participate? Well, Texas and every other republic, almost every republic has a website. And it's usually Republic of, Republic for, the name of your state. So in our case, it's republicformissouri.org. And every one of those websites has the ambassadors and email addresses. Some of them have the email addresses of senators and governors and administrators. And there's the national website where all this is listed in one place. It's www.republicfortheunitedstates.org. Go there. Find the people in your state. Get sound, signed up. Okay? Uh, there, there, is a Republican, there is a republic organization in every, every republic. Um, Say, well, where's your proof? Where's your proof? Okay, these informational videos, the first one was 45 minutes. Like, I'm going to have time in 45 minutes to show you four or 500 pages of documentation. The first video was done very casually for a group of people. We were just trying to take them from knowing nothing to understanding that there was something to research. I'm not the best guy to lay out research. I'm not the analytical type. Okay, we went to a national grand jury case in Georgia uh, a few months back, and one of the men in the Republic who is that type of an analytical, 30-year historian of American history, 20-year uh, understanding law and common law, put together a presentation for a national case that's still pending, 500 pages of certified documents from archives from city halls all over this country and some from out of this country. I can't educate you in a 30 minute video and if you're too lazy to read some stuff and do some Google searches, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I promise you the documentation is there, but it's buried. They were able to bury the 13th Amendment, which is the Titles of Nobility Act which not only makes it illegal to be in Congress if you have a title of nobility, it also makes you a non-citizen. It was published in all the publications from about 1921 
all the way to 1965, you can find it in print. But they tell us, oh, that amendment was never ratified. It was just a clerical error because communication was so slow in those days. And then a well-placed fire here and a well-placed fire there. And American people are dumb enough to buy that. If they can bury an amendment to the Constitution, you don't think they can bury other information that proves this? But it's out there. The Internet is bringing it down. Uh, let's see. Um, said your first video that gold was confiscated and it was confiscated in 33. What did I say, 1930? Okay, maybe I'm a year or two off on my dates. Hey, I apologize. I misspoke. It doesn't change the content reality of what I've said. Okay? I also understand that Lincoln wasn't alive when the act of 1971 came around. I knew he died before that. I was tired. I misspoke. Please forgive me. Alrighty, uh, here's a lady who wants to take the information in the first video and make it part of her homeschooling for her kids. Hoorah! Hoorah! If we don't find this truth, if you don't learn it and pass it on to your kids, the reason this was all taken away from us was we allowed ourselves to be dumbed down from the truth. So yes, let's pass it on to the future generations. Here's a man who's a convicted felon. He wants to know if he can part of the republic. My, my question to him is this. Was there an injured party with this felony? Did you injure some person or did you injure someone's property? There was an injured party. Did you make restitution? Or are you a felon because the IRS says you're a felon? <clears throat> well, if you're a felon because the IRS says you're a felon, as far as the Republic's concerned, you're our hero. So I don't know the answer to your felonies, but the Constitution and common law says, and the Bible says, there's an injured party. You injured a person or you injured property. And if you haven't injured their property, you haven't injured a person in some way, you're a free man, you're a free person, okay? All right. I'd like to close in prayer. Now, maybe I don't pray the same way you would pray, but I would hope that you would join me in a prayer for our country on this 4th of July. And I'm just going to hold this nice little pillow while I pray. So if you close your eyes and pray with me, I'd humbly appreciate it. Lord God, Jehovah, maker of heaven and earth, strengthen us. Strengthen us, Lord. Lord, we admit to you as the creator that we have uh, not followed your guidelines. We have not obeyed you as we should have as a nation. Some of it has been out of ignorance because we've been lied to and trusted our leaders. Some of it has been intentional because we've been greedy and selfish and we love the materialism that this, uh, this economy has borne us here over the last couple hundred years. Lord, we're not a wealthy nation unless we have your blessing. Lord, we're not a prosperous nation without your blessing. We ask you for forgiveness for our part in abandoning the, the, the golden rule of do unto others as you would have them do unto to, to yourself. We would ask you to please give us our country back into a republic and get these international bankers and crooked politicians out of running this country so that we can be free in the areas that we're supposed to be free. Lord, you have created us to be free. We want you to please, Lord, please restore this republic all the way back to the county and to the city level. Lord, those that are watching this video and hearing this prayer, if they haven't joined the republic, Lord, I pray that you'd show them that they'll get their questions answered. But now is the time to join. Now is the time. Lord, help us to work hard to wake up the other 290 million Americans that are still asleep and don't even understand the deception that's been done to them. Lord, please restrain the evil plans. Lord, please restrain the evil plans that the corrupt international bankers are willing to put forth 
just to gain financial dominance and power and control over the American people, or thwart their plans, stop their plans. You can do these things where we cannot. We can work hard and you can bless our efforts. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.